A review of scientific studies on the world's insect populations has shown that more than 40%, that's 40% of insect species are declining and a third are endangered. At this rate, insects could vanish off the face of the earth within the next 100 years. Derek Watts looks at what this would mean for the human race. The world's insects are dying at twice the rate of vertebrates on earth. The analogy that I love to use is you're sitting on an airplane, somebody comes down the corridor towards you and pulls a rivet out of the fuselage, and that's the species. According to a disturbing new scientific review, we're losing 2.5% of the world's insects every year. When I turn my lights on, I don't see as many moths or insects flying around my lights as I saw 10 years ago. Which means that in just 100 years, there may be no insects left on the planet. I grew up in an area where there's lots of bushland, and every summer it was deafening with the sound of cicadas. And it really worries me that that aspect of my, my childhood won't be available for future generations. No bees, butterflies or moths to pollinate our flowers. No flies or dung beetles to decompose our waste, threatening a catastrophic collapse of nature's ecosystems and life as we know it. Without insects, you know, don't have any pollination, so that's only beer and rice for the future, so to say, no fruits. We cannot continually lose species from our ecosystems and expect those ecosystems to stay intact and still work. Is the insect apocalypse upon us? In 2018, a new scientific review was published that shocked the world. It aggregated 73 insect population studies from around the world and reached some alarming conclusions. Chris Weldon is an associate professor of entomology at Pretoria University. He explained how the review was conducted. The way that this review was able to detect worldwide insect declines was that they performed a literature search. They entered three search terms, insect, survey, and decline. And they found that across the board, there's predicted to be a 40% decline in the number of species of insects over the next few decades. And that decline is actually twice as high as for vertebrates. One of the most disturbing results came from the rainforests of Puerto Rico. It compared insect populations now with those from 35 years ago. It found that 98% of the ground foraging insects had disappeared, meaning that only 2% of insects from then can still be found in that forest. So what are the reasons for the decline? The first one and the most important one was habitat loss. The second most important reason is pollution and pollution also included insecticides. Third, climate change, and then fourth, uh, the introduction of invasive species into environments where they're not usually found. Albert Einstein said, look into nature and you'll understand everything better. But the natural beauty we take for granted wouldn't be possible without the crucial role of insects. For many of us, insects are an annoying nuisance, but in fact, most are not pests. So what beneficial role do they play on planet Earth? Insects are pollinators. I mean, without pollination, you're going to have potential food problems. They bioturbate the soil. They create um, increased aeration. They create increased water filtration, which is incredibly good for plant growth. Dung beetles are increasing the nitrogen within the soil. Flies, I think a lot of people don't realize that they're huge pollinators. We see them as pests or parasites, then a lot of them aren't. They're predaceous, so they're feeding on carcasses and removing carcasses from our ecosystems, which is incredibly important. A portent of the future comes from drastic declines in bee populations in places like Hanyuan County in China. It's known as the world's pear capital, but heavy pesticide use has led to farm workers having to painstakingly pollinate the pear trees by hand. One of the contributors to bee decline worldwide is a type of insecticide called neonicotinoids. Commonly applied as a coating to commercial crops, these neurotoxins have been shown to accumulate in the landscape where they're consumed by non-targeted insects like bees. Professor Christian Perk studies the effect that neonics have on them. We're looking at the effects of neonicotinoids on, on individual bees and groups of bees, how they affect their flight ability uh, and their ability to actually taste sugar. Uh, one of the other things we are looking at is thermal regulation. So how do they are able to keep the temperature within a hive. 
which they keep at 36 degrees. And what we found is that their activity drops, so they can produce less heat and therefore are more impaired or unable to, to actually do their duties in the hive. Most of the studies cited in the review come from developed countries in Europe and North America, but not to other parts of the world where information on insect biodiversity is either incomplete or lacking. Scientists in South Africa aren't sure if the same thing is happening here. So, yes, we immediately have to wonder, is the same thing happening in this country here? And if I was pushed, I would have to say probably. In South Africa, we don't, actually don't know. We don't have any long-term studies to really give us the information required to answer that question. So while scientists don't know definitively, there is anecdotal evidence that points to this. I do know some colleagues at Pretoria University who are looking at dung beetle populations, for instance, in the Drakensberg. And there are people studying be other beetle populations in the Kruger Park. Then there's the effect of climate change. CO2 concentration in the atmosphere has basically doubled in about the last 150 years. Plants benefit massively from that extra CO2. So, for instance, a cactus plant will make bigger thorns and a thicker cuticle, and therefore it becomes much harder for the insect to eat it. And the other animal that we're using are dung beetles, and it would appear that the CO2 that is seeping into the soil is changing firstly the pH of the soil and is also changing the respiration of the soil. We're ending up with smaller, less resilient dung beetles. Just a few examples of more than a million insect species around the world. And if a recent report is true, this may be the only way that future generations will be able to look at them. Is the insect apocalypse really happening? I think Given that this is now the third paper that follows on from one in Germany, where they showed an 80% decline in insects, one from Central America, and now this one, which is a meta-analysis across the whole planet, largely, I think we do have to take it seriously. But what can be done to arrest these precipitous declines? We, we like these beautifully manicured gardens. Insects often don't like that. They like a garden that's potentially a little less tidy, a little bit more untidy. They also like plants that they can feed on. So look at planting endemic or indigenous plants that insects can pollinate and or feed on. Let your grass grow a little bit longer. Insects actually like that. Grow your own vegetables. I mean, you're attracting pollinators, you're also reducing your carbon footprint. One of the main things that we can do is to reduce the amount of insecticides that are used, restoring native habitat, and more generally, combating climate change. In Earth's long history, there have been five major mass extinctions when more than 75% of species disappeared. The last saw the end of the dinosaurs. Scientists warn that these massive declines in insect numbers is evidence that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. But there's still time to arrest the situation, and we may be one of the last generations of humanity able to do so. Yes, I'm optimistic, because I think people are clever. And when we're up against the wall, we can solve problems. We know more and more about the world around us, and we can react much faster than we used to be able to.